Namaste, I'm Dr. Robert. And today on Five-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, my subject is my first meeting with Vimalananda. I was studying in the Ayurvedic College in Pune, and because I wanted to make sure I had enough money to remain there for six years and not uh, burden my parents with any kind of expenses, I wangled a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities to report on Ayurveda as it was being used in Pune at that time. And so I was interviewing all kinds of different practitioners who were doing <coughs> different things in the Ayurvedic world in Pune. And I was getting the Sanskrit professor at the college, Dr. Bhavasar, who was also in charge of the college hostel, meaning dormitory, or um, dormitory, uh, to help me find people to uh, interview. And so one of the doctors who was then at the um, hospital, one Dr. Galsashi, uh, Dr. Galsashi, who I um, didn't ever get to know too well, but uh, uh, was a friend of one Mr. Chotu Vijaykar, who I got to know very well. And Chotu was a longtime friend, associate, and um, companion and sidekick of Vimalananda. And so it was Chotu who su suggested to Galsashi, who suggested to Bhavsar, that I meet um, Vimalananda because he had been um, uh, initiated into um, various vidyas, including Ayurveda. And um, Chotu assured Galsashi, who assured Bhavsar, who assured me that he would be a worthwhile person to meet. And it turned out that he was going to be in Pune for the races because in Western India, um, horses race in, in Mumbai from November through about March, April. And then <clears throat> the race course is lower than sea level, so it takes some time for, um, or pieces of it are, and it takes some time for it to dry out. So then August, September, October, horses race in Pune. So he was there to watch one of his mares race and um, so I went to, I walked over one day to visit him, and he was at the race course, in fact, and that mare um, won that day. I didn't, never got to know the mare, that mare very well because she went up to stud sh shortly thereafter, but she was a very nice animal. And um, so he was not there, but the nice people at the Irani colony, which was a mere 20-minute walk from where I was staying in the college hostel, they said, please come back tomorrow about this time and he'll be here. So I came back the next day about that time and there he was. And naturally he was in a good mood because his mare had won and she was about to go off to stud anyway and everything was looking good. And he was certainly a different kind of Ayurvedic doctor than I had met uh, during my period of meeting Ayurvedic doctors both at the college and for researching for this um, report I was supposed to be doing. And he, he just, not only was he um, much better built because he had been a wrestler when he was young, and not only was he much more articulate because he had uh, been educated in English as most of the other doctors had not been, but he also just had something about him, some, an aura of some kind that suggested there was more to him than just Ayurveda. And so... He was very kind, very uh, modestly formal at that moment, but he, um, and he asked me a few questions and I said, well, I, I have a questionnaire and I would like to present it to you and, um, and, and then come back and uh, whenever you've finished uh, answering the questions, I'd like to pick it up. And he said, why do, don't bother with the questionnaire, let's just talk. And so I came back over the next couple of days and I found that without giving him the questionnaire, he had answered all of my questions that were on the questionnaire. So this was the first thing that made me think that there might be something particularly unusual about him. This is Dr. Svoboda wishing everyone a very fine experience of reality.